We are clearly in a fine mess right now, and I wish you well trying to uh, help guide us out of it. Um, but I have a fairly specific question I want to ask you, and I want to f tell you why I'm asking it first. Because I think we have this problem, but I think it's one of three major problems that we have as Congress to look at. Um, and of those three, this is the smallest problem. This is looking at a seven, eight trillion dollar problem right now. Coming fairly shortly behind it is a 35 trillion dollar problem of unfunded Medicare. And not far behind that is the problem of ocean acidification and climate warming and a complete global change that has never been seen in the history of the human species on this earth. So we've got some fairly significant we have three major significant problems to deal with. We have one supply of political capital to deal with them. And I'm worried that that one supply of political capital is going to be burned up solving this problem, and that by the time we're done with it a year, two or three from now, people will be so fed up with government's response to this that we won't have the political capital to address those other things. And the thing that I see as most damaging to this country's supply of political capital is the lack of comprehension on the part of Wall Street that the lives of luxury that they have been living that would make a pharaoh blush are completely inappropriate to a situation in which the government is being asked to support that going on. Now, what President Obama did, I think, was very helpful and is a very good first start, but it hits strongly three companies and only a few people. There are two levels. The main level seems to hit only three companies. The other level reaches more broadly. I think that the support we're giving to these industries is very broad. People say that the AIG support was really designed to protect Goldman Sachs and others. It's a, there's a network there, and I, I just worry that we've got to take this more seriously than we are right now. And the specific question has to do with the Wall Street Journal article a few weeks ago that pointed out that there's $40 billion in deferred executive compensation on the books of TARP recipients. And at the moment, we have zero transparency into that. And there's zero chance of giving it any kind of a haircut going forward because we've created no mechanism that would allow us to even consider doing that. When you consider the war we had in this Senate, over somewhere between 18 and 35 billion dollars to support our entire auto industry. The notion that 40 billion dollars needs to be blown out into deferred executive compensation with, again, zero transparency and zero haircut, I think really puts at risk the public support that we need to address not only this but other problems. Um, it's fine to look forward, but there's a lot of really you know, heavy-duty stuff on these companies' books that executives have, have booked and salted away either to dodge taxes, which deferred compensation does, or to provide specialized retirement packages that their employees don't enjoy. And I think that stuff is a lingering time bomb, and I really think we need to get at addressing it. Um, as a lawyer, I think you need to have some due process for those folks. You can't just move in and take it away. Um, but we don't have any process for doing that right now. And so I think we're on a collision course with a, a real problem if we don't deal with that. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. Senator, I completely agree with you. And I am, uh, share the deep sense of distrust and anger and outrage that's been created by the cumulative judgments of those firms and the boards of directors. And as I said in my beginning, I think that over a long period of time, compensation just got completely out of whack with no appreciation of risk. And we've seen judgments made as this crisis intensified that reflected, frankly, no judgment about the scale of the, of the damage caused. And our obligation is to try to help protect the people who behave responsibly through this crisis from being excessively damaged by the actions of those who were less responsible. And compensation is the heart of that. And one of the most important things we have to do is going forward, try to make sure we fix that system so the incentives are not so distorted again. Now, you're raising a very important we'll and Focus for a sec on the looking back part. Right. It's I'm, on I'm their books. Yeah, it's... I'm coming to that. Uh, you're raising a very important, complicated thing. You're right, it's going to be hard, and ca hard to do. In the, in the proposals the President laid out last week, we've, we've put some tough things in there that help mitigate that risk in circumstances where there was clearly misleading fraud in the institution. 
We're open to looking at ways we can do more. I know you, you're, you know the sensitivity and complexity of doing that, but I appreciate the problem, and I agree with you that our overall credibility and our ability to help solve these problems and the others will depend on how we're responsive to this here. Happy to work with you on it, listen to ideas. Uh, uh, I don't think it's going to be easy, though. Thank you.